So I want to start off my talk with a quick disclaimer. <laughs> I am very excited to be here, but I'm also incredibly terrified. Um, I'm speaking about mental health and mental illness. So that means I'll be talking about a subject that you all know is taboo and something that society doesn't really like mentioning. And while I'm not afraid of people's judgment anymore because of what I have been through, I am afraid of the consequences that come out of that judgment. I'm afraid of being isolated. I am terrified of feeling like something's my fault when it wasn't. And I'm also afraid of being ousted for going through something that's completely normal. It's so normal that one in four adults actually suffer from some sort of mental illness. So I want you to take that in. Count yourself, the person to the left, the person to the right of you, and the person behind or in front of you. That's four. One of you is suffering from mental illness, but we're all high-functioning adults. And people don't know that. But take me, for example. Um, I got into UT. Uh, as a freshman, I was very excited. You know, hook em horns. I've had school pride since I was 12. Mostly because the boy I had a crush on wore a lot of longhorn gear, but that's besides the point. Ooh. Um, I got into UT and my first semester included fighting with my parents because they didn't want me to leave home, getting cut off financially, <laughs> taking out loans having my dad get diagnosed with leukemia, the same type of leukemia that took his father before him, by the way. So that wasn't a fun talk to have. It also included getting phone calls from my siblings saying, you know, it's not your fault that our dad has cancer, but oh my goodness, if you had have just stayed home, he would be healing so much faster. If you would have stayed home, my relationship with my father wouldn't have gone south because they, they supported my decision to come to UT. UT's a great school. But that meant them fighting and disagreeing with my father, which if any of you have grown up in any sort of Dominican household, you know that what father says is like the law. And so I was getting a lot of blame put onto me and it was a lot of other people's baggage. But I carried it with me because I believed them. So that's the end of my freshman year, and I was pretty isolated. That summer, I stayed with my parents, and I got a job, and I think two, maybe three events happened that caused a total shutdown of my brain because it wanted to defend itself. And that was, one, the resurfacing of a high school classmate who assaulted me my senior year came back up. Second one was finding out that a loved one was suicidal, and I didn't really know how to digest that information. And the third one was that I was feeling so lonely because I was isolated my freshman year that I decided to do sorority rush because nothing says I'm not lonely like buying 200 sisters. <laughs> However, you know, things didn't really go quite as planned. <laughs> I ended up not getting into the sorority I wanted. I wasn't going to pay thousands of dollars to be in the one I didn't want to be in. Long story short, I ended up alone again, and I just shut off. I grew numb. I started lashing out at people I cared about, blaming them. I had one friend at this university that was the young man that I was dating at that time. I blamed everything on him. And it was a really toxic situation to just really be around me. And, you know, I could go through all of the, the boring part of depression where you basically want to sleep all day, not shower, not eat, not do anything, really. Um, and I'll just skip forward to the part where I was nearly hospitalized. And that was pretty hard because, <laughs> I mean, I was almost hospitalized. But what ended up happening was, through talking to my therapist, she was telling me, okay, well, we have a couple options because we want you to change what you've been doing. I got to do this thing called an intensive outpatient program, which is basically group therapy four times a week for an hour and a half each time. So it was definitely intensive. But group therapy is actually what I attribute most of my healing to. 
And the reason was is because I walked into this IOP expecting a lot of individuals to be sort of clouded, put off, and basically to look like this. Thank you, I drew it myself. <laughs> and instead, I was actually greeted with a group of maybe 10 to 15 people who were all f high functioning adults, by the way. <laughs> uh, there was one, one young lady, she was a computer science major. She had like a 3.9, I think, because I ended up talking to her. She was so passionate about her career. Um, There's another young lady who was in a spirit group, who was basically a non Greek sorority. Um, there was a young man who talked too much. Uh, oh, there was a UT football player. And there was me, a pageant queen, who's pre-med and does, does science. And so I looked around this room and everyone was so normal. We'd have breaks because an hour and a half is way too long to sit in one room. And we all joked, we all had the same TV show, like the same TV shows, we all had homework. A lot of us were, again, high functioning adults. We paid the bills. But we all still suffered from mental illness. That's why we were there. And I didn't see people with a big sweatshirt that just kind of hid to themselves saying like, I'm sad, don't look at me. But instead, saw very normal people and I was highly surprised. So I say I was in pageant queen, right? And here's my Miss America crown. Pretty sparkles. And the thing is, is that no one knew that I was suffering. The same way how anyone would look around that room and say, I would have never thought any of these people are suffering from mental illness is the same way you would have looked at me. Because the night before I won this, before I won scholarships that I could help pay for school, was the day before, or no, I'm sorry, it was the day after, just one day after, my dad decided to announce to the entire Apple's Bees restaurant in a very drunk fashion that he has leukemia. I was devastated. But I competed and I won, and I'm so thankful. But that also meant I got to go compete at Miss Texas that summer. It also means that I volunteered a lot and that I continued to stay in school and did the whole nine yards and nobody knew I was suffering from depression. Nobody knew that the entire year that I was experiencing was basically turbulent and I was going through turmoil up until the point that I didn't quite want to die but I definitely didn't want to live anymore. until IOP. And so I always ask myself, or I thought about it for quite some time, what was it about group that made me heal? And it was the fact that maybe it was, we were all longhorns. You know, we're all cool people, right? No. Oh, no, 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 no. It was the fact that we met four times a week for an hour and a half each time. That wasn't it either. It was actually just the very simple idea that 10 to 15 people could sit in a room and talk about very human experiences and not be judged. Because the bottom line is, I'm sure I could go to any single one of you and say, have you ever experienced grief? Have you ever lost a loved one? Or have you ever felt lonely? And you're going to answer yes to probably all three of those. And if not, at least one of them. And so that's where mental health has an issue today. Because depression, at least, has, is one of the most well-documented diseases that we've had over the past few, I don't know, millennia. But we don't like talking about it because it's sad. Any sort of mental illness creates this great breeding ground and great foundation for more to fester, which is why they come in package deals. You know, that's why you get depression and anxiety, or maybe anxiety and bipolar disorder, or maybe ADHD and ADD. Or maybe, you know, you go through some sort of traumatic experience, you get PTSD and depression. There's, you know, two for one deals, great. You know what else comes with? A free side of shame and guilt. And so when you're already hearing these voices in your head in a near constant loop of, it's your fault. 
You're suffering because it's your fault. You can do better. You should be happy. And you have someone else tell you, well, have you tried being more positive? I'm like, no, you know what? I didn't think about that, actually. Thanks for bringing that up. Have you tried going outside? Oh, I've just been confined to my bed all day. I didn't realize that I didn't have the energy to, you know, go take care of my basic hygienic needs. I, I didn't realize I could go outside. I'm sorry. Instead of trying to tell someone, you know, like, have you tried these things? I'll give you a few tools to help someone and maybe help yourself. And that's to be openly honest. One of the biggest reasons I ended up healing was because I opened up to a TA. I was kind of emotionally unstable that day. And I ended up telling her, you know, I'm going through a really, really hard time. And she said, you know, I've gone through a really hard time before. In fact, I'm going through it right now. But every day I find a little something to push through and it sucks, but I keep going. And then I have students like you who want to have an, like, real relationship with me and it keeps me going. And I said, wow, the only thing I heard really was, I'm also going through a rough time and it made me feel a little less alone. I had another TA who was very funny that when I ended up telling him, you know, I almost withdrew from the university, he said, I'm a graduate student, I know what that feels like. <laughs> because we all go through turmoil, we all go through some sort of time in our life where we're going to feel alone. And isolation is one of the precursors to mental illness. Mental illness is a very, very human response because we all have different stories. But we also have gone through millions and billions of years to all react the same way. And so we all can relate. And so I want you all to be openly honest with someone. I also want you to quit lying. Y'all are so good at lying. You tell someone, I'm going to be there for you. But actually follow up. And do the second part. Be openly honest and say, I will be there for you because I know what it's like to lose a loved one. I know the grief is going to hit you. It hurts. And sometimes they say time heals, but it's been, you know, three years since... You know, my best friend passed away, and I still hurt. But I will be there for you because I know what that feels like. That would mean so much more to me, and it would make me remember that someone has gone through this, and someone has hurt, and I'm not alone. We go to a school, a great school, that has over 50,000 students. If my statistic is right, there might be over 15,000 students here who suffer from mental illness. And we want to sit here and pretend like we shouldn't talk about it because talking about mental illness is, is weird. Those people are crazy. Let me tell you, the one in four that have a mental illness versus the three in four. The three in four are the crazy ones. <laughs> They're the ones telling me what it's like from my experience. I want you all to know that we can have a very human conversation about a very human experience, and it won't be hard. Just be human. Open your heart. Because, you know, if it's not your friend, it could be you. Thank you.